Public participation. Public participation. Joseph A. Bigloni, 444, 446 Charles Street, Malden, Mass. Joseph A. Bigloni would like a discussion of public participation about public accommodation. A Please point of public accommodation as defined in Mass General Law, Chapter 272, Section 892A, includes any place open to and serving the public. Good evening, gentlemen Good evening. and ladies. Name is the record, please. Uh, yes, Joe Villion, 446 Charles Street, uh, Malden, Mass. 2148. I'll be sending a proposal to the mayor to open a public accommodation television station in the center of town. Now, this is something Mayor McGlynn's tribunal offered up. And the reason I do this is um, it's great that there's a station at the high school, and that's good for the students, and it's good for the city council, but it's critical with 154 days to the election that candidates get their own programs. Um, without this, it's tilted towards the incumbents on the school committee, on the city council, and even the mayor. So I think it's very important that since the students kind of get first dibs on the TV station, and the city council gets a lot of attention from the station manager, I think it's really important and it can be done very quickly, quick build out because we can now put cameras out there that travel over the cell phone wires. Uh, it's not a bill anymore, but a little shop somewhere in Medford where people can go in and there's no uh, quarry check for, for candidates for public office, because I think that's a little crazy too. It, it should be suspended for candidates for public office because it's intrusive. And if someone's going to run for office, I don't think there should be an advantage that someone might see a quarry and tell someone, oh, that person running for office. You know, um, I mean, we know there's a situation with one of the other bodies here in, in Medford that no one knew someone was, uh, you know, not only up and up, never told. He, he did his time, but the problem was he never told the public. So the public was not informed of this individual, and I voted for that person when I lived in Medford. So the other thing, and there's only three issues, I'll be rather brief. Um, the, like we don't have a city charter that, that's renewed, the policies and procedures are antiquated. They need to be updated. I'd be happy to help the mayor. Um, I got a little bit of experience starting in 1979. Um, it would be good to update, just as we need to update the city charter, we need to have updated policies and procedures. They're antiquated, they're, they're wrong for public accommodation. And that's why I put the law down. I thank you, Council President, for reading it. Uh, but it, it's, I mean, this is a democracy. This is America. I don't want to feel like I'm in Texas and, and voter rights being stripped. And I believe public access TV is something pivotal to an election. Uh, it, 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 it clears up the council chambers and you don't have to listen to me. I could be on the access station saying the same thing. But here we are, and I would rather be there, guys and gals, than here. Uh, so it's just logical. We really need to do this for an election. It is uh, it somehow um, it keeps the voters and the candidates from having access. So... I'm not asking the council to vote because the mayor is the issuing authority. So this is going to the mayor. Uh, it's a proposal. And I thank you for letting me put this idea out there in the general public. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public participation? Good evening. Name and address of the record, please. My name is Robert Penta, Zero Summit Road, Medford, Mass. I'm a member of the Saugus Party. Last week, we had an interesting conversation that you started, Mr. President, regarding this little bit of an island that supposedly has found its way at the corner of Woburn and High Street and Hastings Lane. I spent some time during this past week, once again, speaking to bus drivers, members of our fire department, as it relates to the question that I believe the council asked, and I don't think any of you ever got the answer. Whose idea was it to authorize to put that island there in the middle of the street? And if you can just anticipate, as bus drivers do, and as a fire truck would do, in an emergency, snowstorm, whatever it might be, just take one of those big tankers that deliver gas. And in the wintertime, if in fact they happen to be coming down the street and there's some ice or whatever it might be, what about the bike people where the bike lane no longer exists anymore and it's not to be found? And if they ever decide to put that bike lane in the middle of the street in between the the two islands that are there, not the single one, the two islands there, you've got a real serious problem. 
So my question to you, Mr. President, is, is the city uh, engineer, is he still online? Um, I had, we had, that was my, it was, that was my motion to, uh, request a, how the city, uh, how the city, uh, engineer let that happen. Right. And um, then so we, uh, the traffic engineer let that happen. Uh, do we get I an answer? I did not see a response to my package. Is he still online? Can we ask the question? Um, the traffic engineer is not online. What about the city engineer? He I'm quite sure online. an engineering, he's an engineering plan has to take place to put that in. Uh, unfortunately he's not online. So with that being said, Mr. President, they continue to keep going on and doing work. If you just take a look at the idea, if in case there's an emergency, and the fire truck has to make it down that street and make that left-handed turn in a, in a snowstorm, you, you, you're gonna, you, you have a problem just facing you. You've got a bump out coming out there on the corner of Wuben and, and High Street, and it's just, you know, how do you allow things like this to happen? I'm not saying the council. I would hope that the council would make a, a concerted effort to have the city stop that process and actually go out there and look at it, okay? That path coming down on the corner of Hastings, and I, you've seen it, we, we've talked about this, uh, Hastings and High, that thing is so narrow, it, it's an accident waiting to happen, and, and is that what the city has to do, wait for the accident to happen? Correct it before that even happens. And the, the island shouldn't be there. As a matter of fact, they're keeping both islands there. So, I mean, whoever comes up with bad enough going down High Street, Toward West Memphis, right near opposite the Brook School, there's a bump out right in front of somebody's house. It makes no sense. Who, who comes up with these ideas? I mean, it would be nice. You want to talk about public safety? That's okay. It would be nice to maybe have the council think about it or have them involved with it. And I don't know if these are state people. I don't know if these are city contractors or if this is the city itself that's doing it. But it between the, the bump outs and that section right there, Right there on the corner of High Street, Hastings Lane, and Rubin Street. That is a disaster waiting to happen. And I would hope this council takes an aggressive action and holds the city accountable and not continue further with that and get rid of that island. It just makes no sense at all. You'd have to be a complete moron not to understand coming down High Street, that road is so narrow. Just think of it. By coming up High Street. Both ways. Both ways, Mr. President. Both ways. And it's a shame that none of you have gotten an answer back, and you asked for that a week ago. Public safety and not even an answer. For, for, the, for those who don't live in that neighborhood, Route 60 is a, is a, is a major truck route. Um, if you go by there, you see uh, oil tankers, uh, you know, delivering gasoline, oil all day and night. You see uh, uh, tractor trailers coming down there. Uh, are we going to wait till the like, uh, symbols that happen at the other end of Route 60 where the truck tipped over and, and, and uh, all the oil went into the river? Again, um, I've talked to uh, some people from waste management. They're saying they're having a hard time that's getting right. by yeah, there. Right. Uh, I talked to the fire department. They're saying that's going to be a tough turn. And, and we haven't even got to the winter. If you, when, you, when you traverse that road coming, coming up in the dark, that island comes right on top of you with no light on it. And you get the bump out right over there you as well, get too. The bump out right there. And picking, very, up, very and picking up one other very point. Narrow. That, one other point that Council Marks alluded to, because apparently there's been no updating as to the streets, as the sidewalks being a little bit wider in the bike lane. So since none of that has taken place, and you have people coming down High Street in that bike lane, they're going to traverse right into that middle of maybe eight to ten feet wide. And it's, rides the bike it's, there, it's, it's just, it's just. I, I, I would I hope this where, council, I the bike safety people are in this either. I, I would hope one of you on this council would would make a motion to just put a stop in that project to fully have a complete public safety review. It's already, unfortunately, Councilman, it's already up. It's uh, up, but it can also be taken down. It, okay, it needs to be taken down. I think. 